please, Professor Ms. Lehan, uh, go ahead. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to thank Professor Alexei Karapendrios and also Professor Vladislav Krauchenko uh, for inviting me to present a talk in seminar on analysis, differential equation, and mathematical physics. My talk is about Hilbert system module independence. Uh, throughout the, this talk, we assume that A is a unital sister algebra with unit one. The set of all positive elements of A is denoted by A plus. By a state, uh, we mean a bundle linear functional phi on A of norm one, taking positive elements uh, to non-negative numbers. The convex set of all states of A is denoted by S of A, which is a compact cost of S in its relative weak star topology inherited from the dual of A. The restriction of a state phi to a subalgebra B is denoted by this. Um, in this talk, uh, we employ, without further comment, the following fundamental facts about elements and states of sister algebra A. Given a state phi, the cauchy schwarz inequality is this, the number one. In particular, if A is self-adjoint, then we get the Cardison inequality, this, and uh, for each element A and each state phi, from one, if we take B to be zero, then we get the choice quality of this form. Okay? If quality holds in this inequality, then we say that phi is definite at A. In this case, for all B in A from the cauchy schwartz inequality, we can get uh, this, uh, in fact, uh, multiplicative form, uh, property of phi. And similarly, this. Thus, phi has a kind of multiplicative property. So when phi is definite at a, we get such relations, okay? There are several non-commutative versions of independence. Now, I, I, I will present uh, some of them in my talk. One of them is the notion of CSR independence, which was first introduced by Hogg and Kostler. Assume that A and H, A1 and A2 are CSR subalgebras of a CSR algebra A, and let, uh, in fact, uh, both of them have uh, the same identity of A. These subalgebras are called CSR independent if for every state phi1 on A1 and phi2 on A2, there exists a state phi on the big CSR algebra A, extending both phi1 and phi2 in the Hanbanach sense. So this is a, a key um, word in my talk. Floring and Summers proved that the CSR independence is equivalent to this statement for every positive norm one element A and B, there is a state phi of A such that this uh, equality is hold. Furthermore, they showed that a1 and A2 are CSR independent if and only if this equality holds, this norm equality holds for all A in A1 and B in A2. 
In fact, there are a vast range of examples of non-Abelian and uh, Abelian subalgebras that are CSR independent or are not CSR independent. Another type of independence is the logical independence. Two CSR algebras, A1 and A2 of A, are said to be logical independent if for all non-zero projections, P in A1 and Q in A2, there is a non-zero projection R in A such that is majorized by both P and Q. Here we have the loner uh, relation. Uh, it means that P minus R is a positive element of our CSR algebra. If R and P are projection in a CSR algebra A, then R is less than or equal P if and only if this condition holds. Phi of P is one. Whenever phi is a state, is a state on A with phi of R equals one. There is another important type of independence. Two CSR subalgebras A1 and A2 are called Schilde independent or briefly S independent if AB is non zero whenever A and B are non zero. It is known that logical independence implies CSR independence and CSR independence implies S independence. And the reverse implications are valid if CSR algebras A1 and A2 commute. Okay. Another significant non-commutative notion of independence is that of operationally CSR independent. Two CSR subalgebras A1 and A2 of a CSR algebra A are said to be operationally CSR independent if every two completely positive unit preserving maps T1 from A1 to A1 and T2 from A2 to A2 have a joint Hanbanach type extension to a completely positive unit preserving map T from A to A. Evidently, operationally CSR independence implies CSR independence of CSR subalgebra since uh, every uh, state is uh, already uh, completely positive. Well, now I I'm going to present uh, the notion of Hilbert CSR module. The concept of a Hilbert CSR module is a generalization of that of a Hilbert space in which the inner product takes its values in a CSR algebra instead of the complex field. Some basic properties of Hilbert spaces are no longer valid in the framework of Hilbert CSR modules. In general, for example, uh, not any close up module of a Hilbert CSR module is orthogonally complemented. I mean that M direct sum with M pair maybe is maybe not equal to our Hilbert CSR module E. Also, not every bonded CSR linear operator on a Hilbert CSR module is adjointable. While we know uh, every bonded linear operator on a Hilbert space has an adjoint, but uh, in the content of uh, Hilbert CSR modules, uh, we have uh, we do we do not have this property. A CSR algebra A can be regarded as a Hilbert module over its via the, we define the inner product of A and B to be ASRB. The norm on a Hilbert CSR module E 
is defined by this, like Hilbert spaces. However, we know that this inner product, x and x, is a positive element of A. Its positive square root is denoted by the absolute value of x, and sometimes uh, we say that uh, the A absolute value of x, okay, this is the norm of x, this is the absolute value of x. Note that this absolute value in general does not satisfy the triangle inequality. I mean the, the absolute value of x plus y is not less than or equal to the absolute value of x plus the absolute value of y. Unless our CSI algebra is commutative. Okay. It is called module independence. Again, let A be a CSR algebra and let B be a CSR subalgebra of A. Let phi be a state on A and phi 1 be a state on B. Then we say that phi is a semi extension of phi 1 if there exists positive number M and capital M such that this double inequality holds for all A in the unit ball of the positive part of A. So A is the positive element of our CSR algebra. Now I present uh, our key terminology. It is called module independent. Assume that A1 and A2 are unital sister subalgebras of a unital sister algebra A. We assume they have the same unit of A. We say that A1 and A2 are module independent if every pair of states phi1 and phi2 on A1 and A2 have a common semi-extension state phi on A. In other words, I mean that there are two positive number M and capital M such that M phi i a is less than or equal phi of a is less than or equal capital M phi i a2 to the power half. Again, for all a in a plus. To continue <clears throat> and present uh, the main result, I need uh, and uh, I need to introduce a notation. Given a state phi on a CSR algebra A, we denote its left kernel by n sub phi to be the set of all x in A such that phi of x star x to be zero. It is well known that n sub phi is a subset of kernel of phi. However, the positive parts of the kernel of phi and the left kernel of phi coincide. Our first result reads as follows. Let A1 and A2 be units of sister subalgebra of A. Then A1 and A2 are module independent in A. These, these statements are equivalent. A1 and A2 are module independent in A. There is a positive constant M 
such that for any pair of states phi one on A1 and phi two on A2, there is a state phi on A such that these conditions hold. Another statement is that again we we get a, we get a constant m such that for any states phi one and phi two on a one and a two there is another state on phi on a such that the restriction of phi to a one is a scalar multiple of phi one and similarly uh, we have the same statement about A2 and Phi2. Even if module independence is close to C star independence, however, it is strictly weaker than that. For example, let A be uh, the algebra of two by two complex matrices. Take two orthogonal rank one projections, P1 and P2 in A, such that P1 plus P2 to be the identity matrix. Consider subalgebras A1 as this form and A2. and take the states phi1 and phi2 on a1 and a2. Then there is a state over a extending phi1 phi and phi2 in the Hanbanach sense. As this extension would assign value 2 is equal to phi1 uh, phi p1 plus phi2 p2, to the unit of A. So this is impossible. Therefore, A1 and A2 are not C star independent. However, the normalized trace to is a state on A, we know that. Its restriction to A1 and A2 is half times phi1 and phi2 respectively. So the module independence hold with m equal to 1 over 2 i mean this so so we have uh, uh, we we conclude that a1 and a2 are module independence okay when considering the configuration in which all algebras in question share a common unit then module independent independence and CSR independence coincide. Indeed, suppose that A1 and A2 are CSR subalgebras of A having the unit one of A. Suppose that A1 and A2 are module independent. Thanks to our assumption, any state phi on A that restricts to a multiple of a state phi one on A1 must in fact to be uh, to be equal to phi 1 since uh, the value of a state on the unit element is 1. Therefore, uh, the condition 3, the condition 3 in this theorem, this condition, uh, is equivalent to CSR independence. We can present uh, another characterization of CSR independence. Let again A1 and A2 be unit of CSR subalgebras of A in the same unit. Then A1 and A2 are module independent. A1 and A2 are CSR independent, this and this, as well as for each couple of states, five one. And phi 2, there is a state phi on A with this property. 
the left kernel of the restriction of phi to A1 is the left kernel of phi1, and also the same statement for phi2. Now we want to extend the notion of module independence presented uh, in the setting of CSR algebras to Hilbert CSR modulus. To this end, we recall the notion of ternary space. Let E be a Hilbert A module, a closed subspace F of E is said to be ternary if we have this inclusion. Note that F and N, the inner product of F of F and this notation denotes the, denotes the norm closure of the linear span of the inner product of X and Y in which X and Y are in F. Note that this value is in our CSR algebra. So here, 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 we have in fact the right action of A on E. I mean, he, we have here the module action. Okay. So, so from this, we can immediately say that. If E is a CSR algebra over itself, I already is a Hilbert CSR module over itself. The inner product A and B is defined by ASR B. You recall that. So according to this, CSR solve algebras are ternary spaces. Every Hilbert space is a Hilbert CSR module when we assume that our CSR algebra is the complex space. So Hilbert spaces are Hilbert CSR modules over the CSR algebra C, the complex numbers. So we can say that ternary spaces of this Hilbert C module I mean Hilbert spaces, are in fact closed subspaces of our Hilbert space. This is an interesting result which gives a sufficient condition in order that F and F is a CSR algebra. Let A be a CSR algebra and E a Hilbert A module. Let F be a closed subspace of E. A closed subspace, not a closed submodule, is a closed subspace. If F is ternary, then we have this. So, this the closed linear span of inner products X and Y, with X and Y in F is a CSR subalgebra of A, and so F is a Hilbert CSR module over this CSR algebra. In addition, we have this. Okay. Now we are ready to, to introduce our key concept of Hilbert CSR module independence. Let E be Hilbert, let E be a Hilbert CSR module over its unit of CSR algebra A. Let E I, E I, I one and two be ternary subspaces of E. We say that E one and E two are Hilbert CSR module independent or shortly module independent if there are positive constant M and M such that for every state phi i to define on this CSR algebra, there exists a state phi on A 
such that this double inequality holds. Recall that, let us go back to the definition of module independent for CSR algebras. In our previous slides, here we have a positive element A of our CSR algebra. But here we have the absolute value of X, this, the positive square root of X and X. Here for one, X is in E1. For two, I equal two, we have X in E2. If we assume that AI to be this CS algebra, then this condition, this condition, in is not equivalent to this. In fact, uh, we can present a, a very easy, very easy uh, counter example. Uh, and I explain that what happened. Let H be a Hilbert space. Let A be uh, B of H. Let K of H denotes, denote the CS algebra of all compact operators on H. Assume that E to be the direct sum of H with itself. We can give to H plus H, H O plus H, a series of inner product structure by this, okay? Here, what is this? This is the rank one operator, X one tensor Y one, acts on Z, takes it to, takes it to x1 times the inner product of y1 and z. This is a rank one operator, similar to rank one operators on uh, a Hilbert space H. If we assume that E1 to be H O plus zero and E2 to be zero O plus H, then I is KH. So we observe that for each x in EI, this operator, the absolute value of x, is a positive rank one operator, while the positive elements of Ri are not necessarily rank one. So, so here, I mean, we cannot replace this by, a, by an element, arbitrary element of our CSR algebra. Why? Since the set of the absolute value of X usually are smaller than the set of all positive elements of our CSR algebras. Okay? So, the following example shows that the conditions in the above definition are not equivalent to this. Recall that in the CSR independence, in, in the second slide, we show that if this holds for A in A1 and B in CSR algebra A2, then CSR algebra A1 and A2 are CSR independence. So we may assume, we may guess a similar relation like this holds for module extension. But unfortunately, this is not true. This is an, a counterexample. Let HPC2 be a Hilbert space a complex Hilbert space. Let K be a non-trivial proper closed subspace of H. 
we set E1 to be K and let E2 to be the orthogonal complement of K. Since this set and this set are the complex number, so E1 and E2 are modulo independent, it is enough to take M and M to be one here. Here. Okay. Uh -huh. However, if X to be in E1 and Y to be in E2 are non-zero, then the norm of the inner product of X and Y is zero, and this is not equal to the product of norm of X and norm of Y. So, so a similar condition like this, I mean this, does not hold in the content of Hilbert series of modules. In the next result, we show that the rows of states phi1 and phi2 in the definition of module independence can be played by pure states. Let E1 and E2 be ternary subspaces of E, then E1 and E2 are module independent if and only if for every pure state phi1 and phi2 on these cis algebras, then there is a state phi on A such that this relation holds. The next example shows that if phi1 is a state on A1 and phi is a state on A satisfying the condition in the definition of module independence, then phi need not be a Hanbanach type extension of phi1. So let me return to this, I mean, M times phi1 is less than phi, is less than capital M times phi1. We cannot conclude from this, phi is a Hambanach extension of phi1. Our examples, our example shows this. Let a, A1, and A2, all of them, be uh, the cis algebra of complex uh, valued continuous function of 0 and 1. Let G be a non constant function such that G of T is greater than half, and this integral is Z1. We set M and M to be D. This. Define the state phi on A by this. Then phi1 is a state on A, and we have this inequality. However, we see that phi is not an extension of phi1 from A are independent, then the intersection of A1 and A2 is C. This is an interesting result. We can present a simple uh, proof for this. 
Let D be in this intersection, be a positive norm one element. By the equivalence form of C star independent, we have norm of DC to be norm of D times norm of C. So we have this for all C in A1 uh, cap A2. It follows that D is one, so we reach the required result. Okay, the next two results extend this fact to the context of Hilbert system modulus. Assume that E1 and E2 be module independent and let the intersection of E1 and E2 be a ternary space. If Z to be in this intersection, then its norm is one. We assume that. Then this inner product is C times the absolute value of Z. Okay. We say that a CSR algebra B has the quasi extension property relative to a containing CSR algebra A, B is a subset of A. If no pure state of A annihilates B, okay? Now assume that E1 and E2 be module independent. Let either this CSR algebra or this CSR algebra have the quasi-extension property relative to A. Then, if Z is in this intersection, a unit vector in this intersection, then the absolute value of Z is 1. Let me recall that the norm of Z is a, a, norm of Z is a, a real number, is 1. And the absolute value of Z is a, an element of our C star algebra is in fact, this one is the unit of our C star algebra. And this is their one, the unit element of the real numbers, okay? Uh, let E1 and E2 be ternary spaces be ternary spaces of E. In the following example, we show that if E1 and E2 are module independent, then it is not necessary that A1 tied and A2 tied are CSR independent. By A1 tied, I mean uh, the closed linear span of this element of our CSR algebra, the inner product of X and Y. Union with E1. <coughs> so, A1 tile is the closed linear span of this set. Again, assume that H be a complex silver space with dimension 2, it is in fact C2. Let A be the CSR algebra of BH of all bounded linear operators on H. Then, if we take E to be H as a Hilbert tester module on, the, on this right action, okay, this right action. X is, in, is, a, is an element of H, T is an operator on H, X dot T right action, right module action of BH on H is defined by T star X. And we define the, the A inner product row by this. XY prime is defined by this. This is a rank one operator. As I told already, uh, X, X bar times Y, 
takes the z to x times the, the inner product of y and z. Ah, it's here. X and z times y for all x, y, and z in h. Okay. Not that here x and z is a, a complex number. Let e1 and e2 be an orthonormal basis of h, and let ei to be hi be defined by this. This is the, the linear span of ei. Okay, so e1 is the linear span of e1. If ai to be this, then hi is an ai module for each i, and we can see that a1 tight and A2 tight are not CSR dependent. The next example shows that the quasi extension property is necessary in our proposition, our proposition 12 here, to be quasi extension property is necessarily. Again, let A be a CS algebra on a Hilbert space H, let P be a non-trivial projection in A. K is the linear span of P. Then it is a ternary space, all closed subspaces, all closed spaces are ternary spaces. In addition, K and K does not satisfy the quasi exception. Okay. Here we show that if E1 and E2 be ternary spaces of E and A1 to be this CS algebra, the closed linear span of the inner product X and Y, X and Y are in E1. And similarly for A2, then E1 and E2 are module independent if and only if A1 and A2 are CSR independent. This is a very interesting theorem. Why? Since since we connect the notion of module independent to the notion of CSR independent. So we may we may transfer from Hilbert CSR modulus to CSR algebras and then go back to the uh, world of uh, Hilbert CSR modulus. Okay. Um, a norm one positive element A is called the determining element for a pure state phi if phi is the only pure state on A, such that phi of A is one. Let E1 and E2 be ternary spaces of E and let AI to be this inner product. In fact, this is the algebra. Let ZI B in EI be such that this holds for all AI in R. Then E1 and E2 are module independent if and only if there are positive number M prime and capital M prime such that we have this long in fact four inequalities. As a consequence, we can get this result that provide a new characterization of CSR independent. As I told you, we have a we have a result in the setting of Hilbert CSR modulus. Then we we tra transfer to the setting of CSR algebras. A1 and A2 are CSR independent. 
if and only if for every positive norm one element a i in a i capital a i and for every phi i state as fewer states on a i then there are Banach type extension phi i tiled satisfying this this Another characterization of module independence dealing with one state can be stated of this form. Again, E1 and E2 are ternary spaces of E. AI is the distance of algebra. Then E1 and E2 are module independent if and only if there are positive constants M and M satisfying this. And also a similar result like this. As a consequence, we observe that if E1 and E2 be ternary spaces of E and Z0, to be in this intersection with its absolute value is one, then E1 and E2 are module independent if and only if this equality holds. This is very similar to the to the to a specific characterization of CSR independence. You remember that the norm of A B A B is equal to norm of A times norm of B. So uh, in the setting of Hilbert CSR modulus, for module independent, we have this result. Um, <clears throat> in fact, if you take, if you take E1 and E2 to be our CSR algebras A1 and A2, okay, A1 and A2, and take Z, Z0 to be our unit element of our CSR algebra, then this inner product is X star Z0. Z0 is one, so we have X star. Here again, Y star Z0. And norm of x star, y star is norm of y x. Here, x star z0 is 1. So we have x star 1. x star 1 is equal to x star. So we have here norm of x star is norm of x and also norm of y. So, so as a consequence of this corollary, we get, uh, we get the characterization of c star independent. Ah, it's here. <laughs> it's here. Uh, so, so I, in fact, I proved this corollary, and uh, we have a norm of AB to be norm of A, norm of B, and a characterization of C star independent. Okay. In the last section, I have about six minutes. In this section, we show that we show that how module independence differs from CSR independence. Okay. Okay. Um, when the dimension, our dimensions of CSR algebra or so Hilbert CSR modules are greater than one. There are complicated cases. In particular, we show that module independence and CSR independence are not stable under small perturbations. This example shows that here A is M4. M4 is 4 by 4 complex matrices. 
the CSR algebra of all four by four complex matrices. We put PT to be this, then P0 P and P1 are in these forms. Let AT, a subset of A, be the two dimensional commutative subalgebra generated by PT and one minus PT. Let V1 be a state on A0 and let phi2 be a state on AT. We set phi1, p0 to be alpha, and phi2 of pt to be beta. Let phi denote a state on A. First, consider the case T to be zero. Then two copies of A0 are not module independent. Second, consider case, the case T to be one then A0 and A1 are module independent. Third, fix T in the interval 0 and 1, and take alpha to be 1 and beta to be 0, then this pair is not module independent. So module independent is not stable under a small performation. And uh, these are uh, some references. Uh, my talk is based on a very, very recently accepted paper by mathematician Nakhrishnan uh, as a joint work with Dr. Iskandari, Professor Hamhalter, and Professor Manoilov, Vladimir Manoilov, Jan Hamhalter, and Rasul Iskandari. And uh, <clears throat> this item is a very interesting book uh, discussing uh, C-star independence and other various uh, types of C-star independence, logical independence, and so on. Quantum measure theory by Jan Hamhalter, very interesting book. And uh, people who likes uh, to familiar and uh, to be familiar with more with uh, these concepts, so may consult this book. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Vladislav. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Professor Mustikan, for your very interesting talk. Thank you. And if there are questions, please, this is time for questions. Maybe. Maybe I have one yes, question. Please, Alexei, go ahead. Unfortunately, there is some problem with the connection, yeah? Hello. Yeah, please. Can you hear me? Now, yes. Because of it, instable internet and in the morning, I told you. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, my question is following. Uh, this general scheme, can you illustrate on concrete example, or let us hint how it can be illustrated on concrete examples that are understandable for people who do analysis of operators, like, for instance, can you take, you, you mentioned about the example when you take a projector right yes. can you for instance if you have an algebra generated by one single projector and uh, multiplication by a continuous say function do you have any kind of illustration for this like typical example mm. of algebra ah. it's an interesting question yes Mm. And uh, you need this uh, example for what? No, just to understand how it works. No, for nothing. Mm. 
just to understand maybe some other examples maybe you have examples of integral algebra generated by some integral operators ah i don't know completely okay it's an interesting question maybe Uh, but you see, we can discuss this question later because I'm not sure yes. that this quite kind yeah. of simple question. Yes. Maybe just an yes. issue you to start. Find, yes, you can find my email on internet, mostly on Yes, yes, yes I know your email. Yes. yes, thank you. Okay, probably other questions. <clears throat> I cannot see if there are some hands. But you see, this is just uh, algebraic theory, so you don't you don't consider concrete uh, operators. Mm -hmm. You you don't have like uh, applications to some kind of algebra. So as I said, of integral operators, or maybe some. Mm -hmm. This is just theoretical. Okay, very, it, it seems to be interesting. Please send me an email and explain your idea. I will think okay. about it. Thank you very okay. much. Okay, okay. Okay, more okay. questions or comments? So thank you for letting us know the circle of questions and problems you are working. Thank you. It was really interesting and uh, nice examples, by, by the way. <laughs> thank you. So if uh, there are no other questions, so let us think, uh, thank our speaker again. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.